free bar, mm -hmm. all the Roadrunner people drinking heavily and offering shots to all the guys that were playing that night. I even had a good time talking to some Roadrunner people that I prefer not to see. You know, so uh, it, it was interesting. It was definitely a, a, a Dr. Drew a uh, celebrity rehab moment in that place, man. I just consistently lurked and drank. <laughs> we both don't remember any of the show <laughs> at all. I had a blast, so. According to other people, I, I had a blast at least. Some people were sober. I know uh, I know Corey, I think, was not drinking at that time or anything. I remember it all. I wasn't drinking at the time, so I remember all of it. I remember every little aspect. <laughs> it was, it was yeah. pretty tame because I, I had to play like 17, 18 songs that night, so I wasn't, I was I was definitely buzzing, but I wasn't uh, out of control or nothing like that. You know, when you're up there and you're worrying about playing a Slipknot song you've never played before in your life, you know, the last thing <laughs> I want to do is be up there and, and be too you know, too fucked up to do it right. Yeah. But if you were too fucked up, we'd understand. Yeah. <laughs> Show motherfucking hands in the air. I'm, I'm, I'm glad I get to see this. This is awesome, man. Well, I had a lot of pride, even for my own songs, but even for, you know, the other people's songs. Like, I wanted to fucking really go out there and kill it and do it justice. Here it comes. Yeah. You know he was gonna do it that long? Yes. You know he was gonna do it that long? No. That's Damn! <laughs> Fucking rule ripper. I don't think I can hit those high notes anymore. That's pretty high. How many different how many different guys and bands were there? Was it like in the forties or fifties or something? Just getting that many dudes and bands to appear one night. That night uh, in particular was really, really killer. Actually one of the one of the best experiences that I've ever had. It was one of the, the top things, you know. I mean, I have some things in in my career that that I put up there. With probably being nominated for a Grammy and going to the Grammys and and uh, the dime bag things that I've done. And, and but uh, but this was definitely up on the top. It was a great vibe, and it completely clashed with what I thought it was going to be. At the time, like I didn't agree with the whole concept of it to begin with. I thought it was self-aggrandizing and just kind of a little pretentious. For me, uh, a record label, you know, kind of getting together and being like, hey, look at us, you know, this is us. You know, I was like, boo, what the hell is this? I can't believe that, you know, it, it's, it's one of those things where it's like you start out thinking that it's going to go some way and then complete 180. I can remember being backstage going, okay, I get this now. You know, this isn't, this wasn't so much about the label, it was about us. The fact that it took a record label to make something so cool happen is, is kind of ironic. It's cool that it did get to happen and everyone got together and was really into it for all the right reasons and it was basically just because we were all so jazzed on getting to jam with each other. Like, a lot of us for really the first time so many of us have known each other for so long, but never actually really yeah. got to throw down like we did that night. And for me, it was just an amazing experience. And I was never even on Road Runner. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> it was cool, you know, of course, jamming with legendary guys like Scott Ian and, you know, jamming with Roy Miroga. We've known each other for quite some time. And uh, we all are in this business together. And we all pretty much know it how it works. And uh, you're all definitely just having a good time drinking. It's kind of funny, you know, you wonder what that's going to be like, all these different personalities in one room. and it's. it's this went over great, man. Everybody was really cool. Metal, you know, in the music business and that, it's always, you, know, you got these competitions between other bands and shit going on. But it was like one night where everybody united. It's like a room oversaturated with super talented, successful musicians all in the same room, but no power structure, no typical kind of like drama that might happen on a tour. It's like everybody checked their attitude at the door for, you know, one night only. <laughs> Put the horns up, let me see you. The really cool thing is, is that there was genuine love for the project. Like people actually made time, you know, from wherever they were at, whether they were touring or, you know, other part of the world, and actually come in and be a part of it. Andres Kisser, you know, coming all the way from Brazil. I was very glad, you know, when I received the call from them to be a part of this. I was in Brazil, you know, here where I live. 
uh, but I thought the idea was great. Uh, Tim Ripper Owens, Jamie Josta singing songs and stuff, so it was like, it seemed like a really big deal. You know, Scotty, and you know, he's definitely a, a busy man being on VH1 yeah. all the time. <laughs> I think it was more about like if Roadrunner would have called people up and it would have been some half ass thing, and, and you know, but they were smart. They got the right guys as the core. You know, pretty much knowing that, okay, we've got these guys as the core, everyone's going to say yes, and, and that, that's what all it takes. It's, it's, a, it's, a, it's a musician to musician thing when, when things like this, not so much a label to musician thing. I guess me and Dino were the record holders of songs and <laughs> participation. I think I, I play one extra song than Dino, so I, I won, you know. <laughs> but I wanted to be involved in, in everything, you know, and uh, uh, because Dino called me, you know, to, to, to learn all the songs. We went to Los Angeles to his studio. This is pretty much how it all started. There's me and Roy just jamming in this room. We are in the downtown rehearsal studios where the Roadrunner uh, All-Stars band got put together uh, here in downtown LA. This is the actual set list and the chart for the show um, that happened in New York during Christmas in 2005. Just been up there since we... Since yeah, we, you know, I never took it down. Yeah, I never took it down. Why do you keep that up there? Oh, uh, because it's classic memory, you know what I mean? People come in here and, you know, different musicians that of coming down here and they're just like, wow, that's just like, you had all those people here? I'm like, well, most of them. As you can see, all the different players that were on it, you know, Joey George and obviously Scott Ian is right here. We've just been waiting here for all these guys to show up again so we could jam <laughs> since. <laughs> yeah, we're putting the band back together, man. 